What's up, everybody? My name is Diego Call from PunchDrunkSports.com, and this is a new segment I'm going to be doing every week, maybe twice a week, depending on how many games there are. It's just going to be a bit of a summary and a recap of some of the main stories or main games that happened over the week of football. And um, so this week, I'm going to cover uh, Leicester City, Arsenal versus Chelsea, and Manchester United's situation. So let's go ahead and start off with, uh, with Leicester, who won 3-0 against Stoke City in a game that I personally expected to be pretty close. But in, in, in typical Stoke City fashion, the game was completely one-sided and Stoke went from being a really good team to being absolute garbage. Which happens every, every time, which is why they're the least you know, recommendable team to put money on if you're, uh, you're going to be betting on something. Leicester, you know, at the beginning of the season, were, were one of those teams that everybody expected to finish. 19th, 20th, whatever, somewhere in the relegation zone. And by the time November came, you know, I had no idea that they would even be able to come close to surviving until January, let alone the end of January, top of the league. I mean, we're talking about a team that, aside from the, ele the first 11 players that they have, you know, on their, their typical 11 starters, really have no one that can that's at a top level, which is why it's it's absolutely... Incredible that they've even gotten this far. And whether they win the title or not, which I seriously doubt, I'm go at this point. I'll say they'll definitely finish top four, but I would say you know probably fourth is is more likely where they're going to finish. No matter what happens, they've had an amazing campaign. They've had an actual uh, you know a crazy season, and no one can take that away from them. No matter what. The second story I'm going to cover is um, Chelsea versus Arsenal which happened at the Emirates Stadium in London. This was a very important game for both teams. On Arsenal's side, it was a game that they absolutely had to win because Leicester got three points, City dropped points, um, United also dropped points, and um, Spurs won. So no matter what, they needed to get the three points to be able to stay close to, the, to Leicester, but most importantly, move ahead of City, who you know dropped points. So... It was a really, really big chance for Arsenal to put a little bit of a gap between them and their main title rivals. The game against Chelsea started off very high-paced. It was very, it was, you know, neither team was pressing too hard, so they were both studying each other. And they were pretty much even up until around 15 minutes when Murder Sacker went in for a very dumb tackle. He actually went into the tackle looking away from the man he was tackling, who was Diego Costa, who was quick, he's powerful. He's one of those guys that can get in your head and get you to get, to get a red card, which happened actually earlier in the season against in the first game against Arsenal. So Murder Soccer went in like an idiot, took out Diego Costa, got red carded when actually he probably should have just not even tried to tackle because Koscielny had plenty of time, well, potentially plenty of time, to get to Diego Costa and if not get a tackle in, at least put pressure on him. And obviously when you have a keeper like Petr Cech, there's always a chance of him making a great save and saving you. So really, he should have just taken on the chin, let Diego Costa go by, and hope that either Koscielny or Petr Cech could get the um, could get the stop, instead of getting a red card and pretty much screwing over his team. In order to cover the to cover the hole that Murder Sucker left, Wenger had no choice but this about <clears throat> excuse me to sub out a striker. So he took out Giroud who was pretty much their most prolific striker of the year, and they had to put in Gabriel Polista. Now, why he didn't take out Walcott, who is a much less consistent goal scorer, he's not all that great when it comes to playing with the team in general. I mean, he's good on the break, but Chelsea is a team who's generally good and solid against protecting themselves from the break. So I figured that a guy like Giroud, who has, you know, he has some pace, but he's also, he's very strong, and he's great in the air. So I thought that was probably a better idea to leave in there to combat, you know, John Terry, Brenislav Ivanovic, guys like that. Nomanya Matic. Instead, he took out Giroud. And that pretty much just admitted to Chelsea that they were just going to counterattack. And that made them pretty one-dimensional. Which means that, you know, Chelsea had a pretty easy time at bossing the game. Five minutes later, five minutes after the red card, a great cross in <clears throat> from the right from Brenislav Ivanovic. Found Diego Costa in the middle. Easy goal. 1-0. Arsenal were in deep trouble. The game pretty much went for the rest of the first half with 
Chelsea dominating. Cesc Fabregas was absolutely destroying Arsenal's midfield. Arsenal didn't really produce much of anything moving forward. And Mesut Ozil, who was their main man, I, could, I honestly couldn't even count three or four touches, three or more than three or four touches on the ball in the entire first half. He was completely invisible. He was like a ghost. Right before the end of the half, a great ball came in over, over the shoulder, I think from the right side, from maybe Joe Campbell. It came right down to Mattia Flamini. All he had to do was tap it in. He had plenty of time. There was nobody on him. He was onside. What does he do? He tries a flying scissor kick with the outside of his foot and sends it completely wide and away over the goal. It was just, I think, honestly, if any other Arsenal player had gotten that chance, I'm pretty sure they probably would have finished it. Anyone with a bit more class and a bit more technique. But it fell to the very wrong person. It was the perfect ball for the wrong person. So, you know, Arsenal had an amazing chance right there to finish it. To, uh, not to finish it, to, uh, to take a goal back. So the second half started more of the same. Chelsea were pretty much dominating, you know, the offensive flow. Sure, Arsenal had maybe had a bit more of the ball. But they weren't really doing any, anything with it until around the 56th minute, Alexis Sanchez made his return from injury. He replaced Joel Campbell, who didn't have a great game. And you can immediately see the difference. Arsenal's players were much more, much more motivated, had much more you know, confidence in the way they were playing. They knew that Alexis Sanchez is a guy who has power, he has pace, he's explosive. He's got everything that, that you need to make a defense, even, you know, even a great defense like experienced players like John Terry, Ivanovic, a great defensive midfielder like Matic, Aspilicueta was an excellent defender. All those players know that when Alexis Sanchez is on the pitch, you're always in danger of conceding a goal. So you can never be all that comfortable and you can never play comfortably. So you could tell that that, that really did motivate and light a fire under Arsenal. However, they didn't really get any clear-cut chances, especially since Ozil, I mean, yeah, Ozil was completely eliminated from the game. Walcott was pretty much non-existent, so there really wasn't much he could do. He had Ramsey, who had a few shots. He had, um, yeah, other than that, there was really no play. Monreal, I think, had a had a good cross in. Maybe almost had a, he had a shot on goal, but there just wasn't there wasn't much to Arsenal's you know attacking play in the final third. They looked dangerous all around, but they just couldn't get that last ball. Walcott had a couple of chances, but he was offsides. I think that Giroud probably would have been able to time his runs better because he's a bit better better at that, in my opinion. Walcott's just a bit too anxious at times. He always finds himself just a little too far out over the shoulder of the defenders. And that was their downfall. Now, in the last 10 to 15 minutes, Arsenal threw everything forward, and Diego Costa got hurt. Now, as soon as Diego Costa came in, uh, had to go off to an injury, you could definitely see... A difference in Chelsea. They were more anxious because whenever you have Diego Costa on the game on the on the pitch, you have a guy who will stop the ball, he'll stop play, you know, he'll let his teammates move forward, distribute it to him, and he'll make a run. So you have a guy that can he can do much, pretty much do anything. He's quick, he's powerful, he's smart. As soon as they lost him, there was a bit less tranquility among the players, and Arsenal sort of sort of started to take control of the game. They had a few chances, but once again, nothing, nothing too major. They had, I think, a, a triple chance, but just the defense managed to stay, managed to stay solid, and and didn't concede. And as as it moved towards the ends, around the last eight to five minutes, Arsenal pretty much pushed everyone forward, which meant Eden Hazard, who had also come back from injury later in that half, and William, who's a, who's the right winger, who's extremely quick. Uh, all these players, you know, these quick players that Chelsea have, Ramirez as well, had the opportunity to go behind the strike, the, the Arsenal defense, and take control of that. They had four or five chances that I counted where they really should have scored and killed off the game. But they just lacked that, that cold, that cold killer instinct in the final third that, that would allow them to completely kill off Arsenal and end up, you know, being able to play the last few minutes in peace, basically. So... You know, overall, the final whistle came. It was a great game. Really back and forth. Really, really quick play. Really fun. Lots of shots. You know, Murder Sacker's red card was completely... You know, it may not have even been a red card, but at the end of the day, he, he screwed up and got to take on the chain. Man of the match was absolutely Diego Costa. He had a great game. He bossed the Arsenal defense. He did everything he could. He got a goal. He got his opponent red carded. What more can you ask for? 
Shout out to Cesc Fabregas, who went into a difficult atmosphere against a former club, put in an excellent performance. He absolutely dominated midfield. And really, if it wasn't for Diego Costa, he would have been man of the match. Meanwhile, on Arsenal, Mesut Ozil did absolutely nothing. He looked invisible. He was pretty much wasn't even there. He probably got 10, 15 touches all game, which is, which is a disgrace for someone who's, who was paid that much, first of all, but someone who the team really needs to look to when they're, when they're struggling. You know, He's one of those players that, you, that has to be able to carry the team, even when they're not necessarily performing at their best. And for someone like him to have so many assists this season and to not show up like he's done so many times in a big game just shows why he'll never really be you know, among those great players, those elite players who are fighting every year for the Ballon d'Or to be named as the greatest player on earth. That's just, in my opinion, why he'll never, he'll never really compete for any major personal prizes. Finally, we're going to talk about Manchester United versus Southampton. Thankfully... I couldn't see the game. I couldn't watch the game live, but I did watch the highlights after the end. I watched the synthesis. And honestly, that looked like probably the worst game I have ever seen. The worst performance from both teams. United, who have spent in excess of £200 million since Louis van Gaal took over as manager, couldn't muster a single shot on goal until around the 92nd minute. I mean, just think about that. Not a single strike on goal. How terrible is that? I just don't see how how this can keep going. I don't think the board are the right people to leave this in the hands of, and uh, I just think Louis Van Gaal he has to be he has to be getting you know he has to be on at this point. I don't know why he's still there. He's not. I just don't see the team improving in any way under him. I think he's gone as far as he can. He bought, he bought the wrong players. He bought youth instead of buying players for the now. He bought Depay, who's gonna be, who has great potential to be great later on. He bought Martial, who is 19. I mean, come on. He has three or four years before he even be coming close to his prime. Sure, these are players that in the future could be great players. But right now, they're just young guys who still have to make a name for themselves. Especially moving into a, a difficult league that they're not used to. It's completely different playing in France or playing in Holland than playing in the Barclays Premier League. So you can't really expect them to take you to that next level. He bought Schneiderlin, which I love Schneiderlin. I think he's an excellent signing. They bought Schweinsteiger. Excellent signing. But they're missing someone creative behind offense, behind the attack. I think until they get that, until they get another excellent defender, you know, a center back to, to pair with Chris Smalling, Maybe even a le- uh, well, uh, Shaw's out until the end of the season. I think I like Shaw a lot. I think there's three or four big signings they need to make. They need to sign another striker, another striker to to, to pair up with Martial in the future and with Rainer now. Maybe even a right winger. There's just there's a lot of missing pieces in this team. And I don't think Van Hal is the right person to do. He hasn't shown that he deserves to be left at the helm of the team to make these big signings to spend that kind of money. So in my opinion, they should wait. Well, maybe not wait. Either fire him now, maybe get a guy like Mourinho, or hope the best. Hope for the best that Van Hal can do something and take us to the end of the season. But that's not what I would do. But um, at the end of the day, I just don't. I don't think this United side right now are going to be qualifying for Champions League. And if you don't qualify for Champions League, you can't get the best players. You can't get the best managers. So right now, I'm I'm not too optimistic about how uh, how things are going to go. Well, that's the end of the uh, of the first vlog. Uh, I'm sure it was pretty rough, but um, it obviously you know it's the first time I've ever done it, so things will get better, and uh, that's about it. If you want to follow me, you can follow me on the uh, on Instagram, uh, Diego underscore Call. Uh, you can find my name on, on punchdrunksports.com, and that's pretty much you know if you want to find me on Facebook, same thing, Diego Call. Um, that's about it. So uh, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys soon on the next uh, on the next vlog.